Psychotherapy is such a personal and private process that it is a mystery to most people who have never gone through it. The following series is a unique effort that allows us to sit in on what is ordinarily a very private therapeutic experience. An actual patient was courageous enough and considerate enough to allow herself to be photographed while actually engaged in therapy with three different therapists. Thus, we are allowed the privilege of seeing and feeling what really transpires. A film series like this, in which three therapists, distinguished by their different orientations, share their therapeutic endeavors, has never been made before. We therefore wish to express our gratitude to Gloria, the patient, and to her therapist, for allowing us to share in their therapeutic adventure. This series will be divided into three separate films. In the first film, we see Dr. Carl Rogers, founder of Client-Centered Therapy, interviewing Gloria. In film number two, Dr. Frederick Pearls, founder of Gestalt Therapy, is working with her. And in film number three, Dr. Albert Ellis, founder of Rational Emotive Therapy, is our therapist. Each therapist will first describe his system of therapy briefly. He will then demonstrate his work with Gloria, and then he will comment briefly on his work. Now, here is Dr. Carl Rogers. From my own years of therapeutic experience, I've come to feel that if I can create the proper climate, the proper relationship, the proper conditions, a process of therapeutic movement will almost inevitably occur in my client. You might ask, what is this climate? What, what are these conditions? Uh, will they exist in the interview with the woman I'm about to talk with whom I've never seen before? Let me try to describe very briefly what these conditions are as I see them. First of all, one question is, can I be real in the relationship? This uh, has come to have an increasing amount of importance to me over the years. I feel that um, genuineness is another way of describing the quality I would like to have. Uh, I like the term congruence, by which I mean that what I'm experiencing inside is present in my awareness and comes out through my communication. In a sense, when I have this quality, I'm, I'm all in one piece in the relationship. Um, there's another word that describes it for me. I feel that in the relationship, I would like to have a transparency. I would be quite willing for my client to see all the way through me, that there would be nothing, nothing hidden. And when I'm real in this fashion that I'm trying to describe, then I know that uh, my own feelings will, will often bubble up into awareness and be expressed, but be expressed in ways that won't impose themselves uh, on my client. Then the second question I would have is, will I find myself praising this person? 
uh, caring for this person. I certainly don't want to pretend a caring that I don't feel. In fact, if I dislike my client persistently, I feel it's better that I should express it. But I know that the process of therapy is much more likely to occur and constructive change is much more likely if I feel a real spontaneous prizing uh, of this individual with whom I'm working. A prizing of this person as a separate individual. Uh, you can call that quality acceptance, you can call it caring, uh, you can call it a non-possessive love if you wish. I think any of those terms tend to describe it. I know that the relationship will prove more constructive if it's present. Then the third quality, will I be able to understand the inner world of this uh, individual from the, from the inside? Can I, will I be able to see it through her eyes? Will I be able to uh, be sufficiently sensitive to move around inside the world of her feelings so that I know what it feels like to be her, so that I can sense not only the surface meanings but some of the meanings that lie somewhat uh, underneath the surface. I know that if I can let myself uh, sensitively and accurately enter into her world of experience, then change and therapeutic movement are much more likely. Well, suppose I am fortunate and that I do experience some of these attitudes in the relationship, what then? Well, then a variety of things are likely to happen, both from my clinical experience and from our research investigations. We find that if uh, attitudes of the sort that I've described are present, then quite a number of things will happen. She'll explore some of her feelings and attitudes more deeply. She's likely to discover some hidden aspects of herself that she wasn't aware of previously. Feeling herself prized by me, it's quite possible she'll come to prize herself more. Feeling that some of her meanings are understood by me, then she can more readily perhaps listen to herself, listen to what's going on within her own experience, listen to some of the meanings she hasn't been able to catch before. And perhaps if she senses a realness in me, uh, she'll be able to be a little more real within herself. I suspect there will be a change in the manner of her expression, at least this has been my experience in other instances, from being rather remote from her experiencing, remote from what's going on within her, uh, it's possible that she'll move toward more immediacy of experiencing, that uh, she will be able to sense and express what's going on in her in the immediate moment. From being disapproving of herself, it's quite possible she will move toward uh, a greater degree of acceptance of herself. From somewhat of a fear of relating, she may move toward being able to relate more directly and to encounter me more directly. From construing life in somewhat uh, rigid black and white patterns, uh, she may move toward more tentative ways of uh, construing her experience and of seeing the meanings in it. From uh, a locus of evaluation which is outside of herself, it's quite possible she will move toward recognizing a greater capacity within herself for making judgments and, and drawing conclusions. So those are the some of those are some of the changes that we have